Hi everybody, welcome to another video. So today we're going to be looking at regulators. I'll give you a quick run through of the ones I've got. I'll give you a run through of which one I think is better than the others. We'll look at a diaphragm type regulator, one that's got a diaphragm in it. Um, in my opinion, well worth having. Uh, we've got some expensive ones here and we've got some cheaper ones here. And we'll just run through what they do really so to start off with because i get asked a lot about regulators what we'll do is we'll look at why you have a regulator where well, it's reasonably self-explanatory when you put one of these gauges on the bottom of your gun you can regulate the pressure uh, now there are other ways to regulate the pressure obviously at the compressor which isn't a good way to do it and we'll look at that when we do the uh, the diaphragm regulator or a, a gauge set or one of these halfway along your line. Uh, not the best way to do it really. Uh, the easiest way is to have it at the bottom of your gun and you can adjust the pressure. A lot of people, well not a lot of people, some people will say that you don't need a gauge and indeed four or five years ago I never used to use a gauge uh, because I just went by what I saw and then people started asking me what pressure I used and of course I didn't realise, I didn't know what pressure I was using so I put one on then and I must say it's not uh, not a, a something that you that you boast about uh, some people but you know I don't need a gauge it doesn't really bother me if you have a gauge or not really uh, I think it's a good idea because it makes it more it just it seems to be easy to adjust um, now one of the things that's come up a few times and one chap actually broke this part off here not on this particular gun uh, this is this is just a gun I actually had but uh, it was actually an iwata and he broke the end off here and that was because he was putting the gauge on so we'll take this gauge here for example and he was putting it on and he put it on with PTFE tape and a spanner and did this up so tight that it snapped this which you just don't need anywhere near that pressure what the best thing I've found to do is you'll see inside here. Hopefully you'll see inside there a taper. Just this part, this part inside here, there's a, a taper. And what that taper does is it mates up with this part here. So that those two tapered points meeting together and you doing this up should be enough to seal it. That's all you need to go like that. And then that should seal it. So you loosen it off, put the gauge to wherever you want to, about there, tighten it up, and there's your gun with your gauge. And that's ready to go. If you're gonna leave the gauge on, you can just nip it up with a spanner, but literally just use a little bit. You don't need loads of tape. You don't need anything around it. It just relies on that taper to seal. So that's all you need. Uh, another thing to remember is if you're using the, these on a gun, which is obviously the, the idea of this video, is when you have your gun, make sure that the, the onboard regulator, if it has one, not all of them have one, but if it has one, make sure that it's fully open. So the air supply to the gun is fully open and then just adjust via your regulator. The reason for that is because if you turn that in, you'll get a different pressure than is actually going through the gun. So it'll be a false reading as such. The other thing to remember is that if you're using a fan, using a fan, if you're adjusting the fan, uh, if you have it on spot fan or anywhere in between, it actually uses less, uh, different amount of pressure. It uses less air for the same pressure. So you'll find that if you've got the fan fully open, so you've got the biggest fan you can get, and you're spraying away and it's two bar, and then you tighten that up to be a, a small spot, it'll say something like 2.75 bar, something like that, uh, you know, 36 PSI. Uh, so you need to adjust your fan and then readjust your pressure afterwards if you want to keep that certain pressure. So make sure to get a, a accurate reading, you take a note of where your fan is and you make sure that that is fully open. And that, that's for all guns, basically. Um, Right, what we do is I'll have a look at the different ones I've got. As I've said, I've got a diaphragm type here. I've got two diaphragm types, which happen to be the same make. Um, another thing to look out for, actually, before I run through the types is... Where's my piece of paper? We put some thinners on a piece of paper. Some of the cheaper gauges you'll get 
the particularly the the face of the gauge will not be thin as proof other parts of it will be as well but the the glass at the front or the plastic at the front needs to be thin as proof that's why I, all these gauges are glass and that tends to be the best thing to have because it doesn't scratch easy uh, and you can just wipe it clean so beware some of the cheaper cheaper ones have a plastic face and it's not solvent resistant so you end up with a spattered gauge that you can't see properly anyway and it just shortens the life of the uh, gauge another thing to remember is if you buy a, a named make this isn't always true and i've got no way of measuring it but if you buy a named make you should get a reasonably accurate gauge um it doesn't matter really because if you've found that 2.2 bar is you know 28 psi uh, sorry what's that about 34 psi is ideal for what you do then just set it at that and as long as you're using the same gauge that will be it if you use a different gauge you might find it slightly different so what we do is i'll run through these ones here the ones i've got and we'll start off at the top and by at the top i don't mean at the top as in the best i mean at the top as in price wise uh which is the Walcom. now this is their carbon fiber version carbon fiber gauge digital as you can see there and it's got a carbon fiber body here or it's a carbon fiber shroud around a metal body uh good points about this is it's digital if you like digital i'm not particularly fussed whether something's digital or not i actually get on quite well with the analog ga analog gauges and obviously you don't need to change batteries uh, and that's about the only good point really if that's what you want uh, it's horrendously big uh, this bit sticking out is a real pain the idea is that you you get it to the pressure you want and then you remove that like that and spray away but when you can get something that that is doing in the size of that then why would you want all this at the bottom of the gun so yeah acquired taste i think that one so i'm not particularly keen on that and that's probably the worst gauge i have and it's the most expensive which makes it even worse i guess um next one in line i can pick any really i'll pick the iwata now the iwata gauge i had two of these i've now got one uh because this part here which is the part that does up against the gun you've got a tapered fit in there as all of these have that's like a, a solid it's a um it's a steel and it is um coated i can't think of what the coating is called uh you know like galvanized so it's not going to um it's not going to degrade much at all this part here is a uh, an aluminium alloy or some kind of alloy it's very light but it's actually useless because it, it's it's like toffee so although you only actually have to do these up by hand, I found one of these wore out simply because the material is just, you know, th these are normally um, metal. Uh, I know aluminium is a metal, but this is normally a much harder metal than this. And it just meant that this thing got, the threads got loose and flop floppy after a while. So I wouldn't recommend this one at all. Actually works quite well. Not too long. Hasn't got what I call a long tail. Uh, so plenty to recommend it but I personally don't like it because I feel that this is uh, something that gives it up I think they sell for about 35 GB pounds what did I I wrote down the name of this DR5 that one's a DR5 uh, this one is a HV was it HV 5, HAV 503B now this is a Japanese Devilbis gauge now for those of you that are still watching and not too bored uh we've got here it's exactly the same as the nsi water gauge same material for that so what i've said about that goes for this i do like it because it's got a smaller uh gauge on it which i do like because the, the less that's hanging off the bottom of the gun the better in my opinion uh so yeah very very similar that's actually quite expensive they're about 60 70 quid in the uk if you if you buy them that's namely namely because they come from they have to come from japan uh, i actually got this with a, a japanese gun but yeah uh of the two i'd probably have the real business and that's just because it's a smaller gauge but given the choice i wouldn't have either really um going on to walcombe 
again uh this is one of their cheaper gauges i got this with a slim combat or something there was an offer on and you got it with a gauge i think these sell for about 40 quid not really recommended at all uh work okay um quite a horrible gauge to use really this feels really plastic well it is plastic but it just feels cheap and nasty this thing here makes the gauge really big and just gets in the way yes you can take it off which is what i do most of the time and you're left with a reasonable quality glass gauge uh so not much to recommend this really uh but it's okay if you get given it for nothing well i suppose you pay for everything don't you but if you're not buying it outright then uh yeah it's fine so i'm left with the ones that i like probably more so we've got a segola we've got the segola rc1 which is the larger of the two i've also got a oh, wrong one i've also got an rc2 no yeah rc1 rc2 uh so the rc1 which is this one here is the bigger of the two uh i quite like this gauge it's not too big this thing doesn't actually get in the way, but it's nice in that it's knurled. It's got a knurled finish, so it makes it really nice and easy to do up by hand. Whereas you're trying to, yeah, he says as he can't even get it on. Uh, you, whereas you, the others, you're trying to do up a nut. This is very easy to do up, although I'm making it look difficult. But yeah, that actually works quite well. So that gauge is getting towards my favourite end now. So the Segola RC1. The Segola RC2, uh, no, that's the wrong one. The Segola RC2, which I prefer to the RC1. Uh, it's got a standard nut there, so it's not as e quite as easy to uh, put on as the RC1. But what I like about it is it's nice and small. Uh, nice small gauge and it doesn't get in the way too much because of the tail now I'll come to the tail in a second because probably the best value for money gauge here uh, and it's not the best gauge but it's the best value for money is the A&I I think A&I call it I've written it down here uh, what is it an SE A&I 101 is the proper name for the gauge uh, and these are quite a good gauge. Uh, they've got a glass front. All of these here have got a glass front. They are quite resistant to solvent. Seem very resistant to solvent. They're quite easily to, easy to take apart. Most of these you can take apart by undoing the... If you look inside there, uh, if we put that on there, you'll see there's a hexagon head inside the taper. Uh, and you can get them apart and you can actually change the O-rings in these if you want to. I don't think you can buy the O-rings as a spare part, but you, you can get O-rings that will fit because I've actually done it to this one, in fact. Um, the good point about this is they actually sell for about £22. Uh, the bad point and the worst point of this and the reason why I, I don't use these much at all anymore, if you look at some of my older videos, I used to use these quite a lot, uh, is the tail, what I call the tail. They're quite a long regulator if you look there for example uh, let's go to one we've actually already done this is the segola so if you put those together it's about that's about 20 to 25 millimeter so three quarters to one inch between three quarters of an inch and one inch uh, being the difference in length and that does make a difference because if you're doing stuff like push bike uh, frames, motorcycle stuff, where you need to move around a lot more. The fact that you've got a long tail, normally you'll have a quick connector of some kind at the bottom. The longer this tail gets, the harder it is to do that sort of movement because obviously you're, you're moving the hose around. So I don't use these much anymore. They are very good value, uh, but I really don't like that long tail. Uh, if I was to recommend one over it it would probably be the segola because it's a really good little gauge uh and it's nice and small and compact but certainly value for money wise that's probably uh you know the gauge to go for now that brings me to the last two i've got here which are currently my favorite gauge gauges even and i have no no qualm in recommending these 
The only qualm I have in recommending them is the price. The price is quite expensive these days. And you can get, as far as I know, you can get generic gauges, particularly in the US. Uh, this is a Meiji gauge. Now the Meiji gauge has a inbuilt diaphragm. So the diaphragm controls or helps control the air pressure. So what you'll get, and we'll look at this, as I said at the start of the video, we'll look at this a bit later on in the video as to what the diaphragm actually does. So you'll, you'll get a better idea of that. But both of these have a diaphragm in them. And these are the two gauges now I use the most. Uh, I have had a problem with the Meiji gauge. Uh, where was that from there? In the, that is a Meiji gauge. You'll see me using that sometimes in my videos. Uh, but it actually has uh, the gauge. Remember I said about the NSI water one that, that broke because this worn out, wore out. Well, that is the actual air um, gauge for one of these. Uh, the same, same thread, 8th BSP, I think you'll find now. And... This one actually went all loose. Not this one, but one of these went all loose. So I'm not sure about longevity of these uh, as far as the gauge goes, but the rest of it's been absolutely fine. Uh, and this one's been used the most. That's been absolutely fine. But the, the benefits of the, um, of the diaphragm are, are, are quite, uh, it really smooths out the painting, I think. It really smooths out the paint application. And as I say, we'll go into that in a minute. So this is the digital version of it. Uh, and again, I've seen one of these in the US. Uh, this is actually bar, but the one I've seen in the US is PSI because they used uh, PSI rather than bar. Um, but I've seen one that looks very, very similar to this. <coughs> and it's about 30 US dollars. We can't get them in the UK. Well, we can. You can get them via Amazon, but they end up at about 50 quid. Uh, and then I would start to think, well, maybe I might get a Meiji run instead. Uh, this is the MARD. This is the MAR. Makes sense. MAR D stands for digital. Uh, the only bad point I've had with this is this is on its third or fourth battery now, I think. Uh, quite easy to change the battery. You literally just unscrew that. Be careful to hold the body just in case it starts turning uh, where it's done in there. This has been out a few times, so it doesn't need to be. Uh, you just remove that there like that. There's a sealing ring on the inside, which stays captive, so you don't need to worry about that. You see an arrow. There's the arrow. And you literally put a screwdriver or whatever. Be, a bit, be careful, because obviously it's a printed circuit board, so don't go through the printed circuit board. But if you push that, like so you will be able to push out the button battery. And that's just a CR3023, I think they are, Yeah, CR2032 even. CR2032, they're cheap as chips, and you can uh, get them anywhere. You don't have to use, well, this is Pound Max. That shows you uh, it's quite a cheap battery. But it, it, it works fine. Uh, not like SATA where you need... Uh, is it run run Jane run renta or something battery? You need a certain battery, otherwise it, it doesn't um, it doesn't show up properly. Uh, yeah, so what I do is I'll put that together and then I'll run through the, the reason I think a diaphragm regulator is better. But hopefully that's um, you know answered some of the questions. I think I said that at the start. If I didn't, then you don't need the same make as the spray gun because that's been asked a few times. Uh, yeah, we, we'll put this uh, together and we'll have a look and see what difference the diaphragm makes to the um, delivery. Hey guys, so this is my compressor. I just set it on the side, also it should, it should go up to about nine and a half bar. You'll notice that I've got my output set at nine and a half bar as well. That would normally go through to a filter set here with an inlet there and an outlet just there. But what I've done is I've bypassed that for the moment because this has a diaphragm regulator inbuilt into it. 
So that will be doing a similar thing to the regulators that I was saying about with a diaphragm. So what I've done is I've just bypassed the two. So my normal outlet there and my inlet there, and I've just bypassed the two. So what we're doing is we're going straight through to the gun. Now I've set this gun to two bar or thereabouts. You will notice that that's going to change actually. Yeah. Turn that down a little bit. Okay, so that's two bar. So you'll notice that this thing here is about I could have cleaned the gauge, is about now about nine bar. And that's just because it's going straight through the compressor because I haven't turned the compressor down. Now if we turn this to two it, we turn this to two bar, when I pull the trigger, you'll notice an initial surge. And that surge means that the gun will be using or, or putting out that pressure initially. But let me put it on wide angle if I can. That's better. It'll be putting that pressure initially through the gun. So your initial your initial startup will give you over pressure, too much pressure. Now you can turn it down at the gun, but what happens when you turn it down at the gun, or if you don't turn it down, the same thing will happen. You will notice that, now bear in mind the compressor's on, so it should recycle when it needs to, but you should notice that gauge come down, the, the output gauge. So the, gauge, the amount that is going through the gun, the pressure that is going through the gun will change now. You see it's going down now? And that's because see, it's well, under two bar and it's dropping down, dropping down. And that's because there's nothing regulating that pressure. The only thing that's regulating that pressure is the onboard regulator on the um, compressor. And there's no diaphragm in that. So it will just slowly let it drop. And that pressure will drop. So while you're spraying away, that pressure will drop. Now, I'm going to connect it up to the diaphragm regulator, which is this thing here. And when I've connected it up to that, we'll do the same thing and we'll see, see what, what the effect is, that, what, what effect it has on it. Okay, so we're back again. Compressor's just recycled again, so it's about nine and a half bar. I've hooked up my standard setup. Now there is, a, as I said before, I think I said before, there's a video about this this whole setup, so I'll put a link in the description if you want to know more. But you see our diaphragm regulator now is holding that at about just over 3 bar, 3.2 bar. And that will allow us to have at the gun about the same coming in, about 3.5 bar, something like that. Now when we pull the trigger... Hopefully you can see. Now that goes to two bar. I need to adjust it up slightly. It's a bit more air. A little bit more air. It's going the wrong way. It shows you how long it is since I use those gauges. In fact, let me clean that. Sorry guys, I've been at this all day. You wouldn't believe how difficult it is to make a video, a video like this. I used the camera on my head to try and uh, do it and it wasn't syncing at all. For some reason, um, vo well, voice and trigger pull wise. So anyway, that's made it look better and that, yeah, made it easier to read. So, yeah, we're at about three and a half bar. And what you should find is that I can I can work away, and by work away I mean pull the trigger, so I'm spraying, not spraying, not spraying, spraying, not spraying, not spraying, spraying, not spraying, etc. And you'll find that I can that that should keep a good steady. Work out while it's uh, still misty, maybe it's the phone. It should keep a good steady uh, pressure. So it should drop between those two points time and time again, don't matter what the compressor's doing. Let's see. Yep, 
and that's the diaphragm regulator doing that so if I leave it open it will stay at 2 bar all the time and that is the most important thing about having a diaphragm the fact that it gives your system a constant flow of air at that pressure so your spraying will be the same all the time and that's the most important part of it and these these regulators like this Meiji one and the, the other ones that I've talked about that have got a diaphragm on you can get some ones that are cheaper than these and they seem to be more or less the same whether they are the same or not I don't know I mean these these have been fine apart from the uh, the gauge that went and maybe I dropped it a few times I'm not sure to be honest but if you've got something like this you can put it if you haven't got such an elaborate system as this such an elaborate filter system you can put one of these in your system if you've just got one or two i'd recommend spending as much as you can on filters more on filters than you can the gun really uh simply because good quality air is absolutely essential if you haven't got good quality air you will not I repeat, not get good quality results. It's as simple as that. Whereas if you've got a mediocre gun, you can get good results because the quality of your air is good. So spend the money on this lot first and then get the gun later. I mean, obviously you'll need a gun of some kind. To cover, you can't spray with one of these, but you know what I'm saying. So one of these, if you've just got a few cheap filters in a row, which is better than nothing, then one of these will take the place of one of these one of these sets as far as regulating goes and it will give you that that flow that we're seeing there the ease of flow but one of the things i also wanted to show you was we're going to hook it up to this and, and you will see in a second because this uses more air this uses about 16 and a half cfm uh, this one uses about 11, something like that. So we're going to swap it over to this, and you'll see that we need to increase the pressure uh, in the system just to get the flow that this thing needs. So I'm going to uh, set it up, and I'll uh, I'll be back here in a second. Okay, guys, so I've connected the Meiji regulator, which has got a uh, diaphragm in it, to the LS400, which is a 16.5 CFM consumption gun. The compressor is fully pumped up at about 9.5 bar. We've got our onboard gauge set at a little bit more, three bar, just over three bar. Now, what we've got at this regulator here, hopefully you can see, is just over or just under three bar so what we're going to do with that is hopefully I'm trying to do it one-handed but hopefully i can show you that when you pull the trigger now this gun wants about 1.8 uh bar which is about 26 cfm but what you'll find is it won't flow enough th this system won't flow enough to allow it to get to it there it's about 1.2 bar which isn't enough isn't enough for good results and that is that is as, as open as i can get it i've got it i've you know opened it up as much as i can get it so what we need to do is we need to increase the pressure here to allow for that flow so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bump it up normally about four and a half bar you need with that gun so i'm going to bump it up to four and a half bar maybe even five bar so that's now at five bar. Our compressor, of course, hasn't changed. What we're getting here now is we can see that we've got about four and a half bar. So it, it, this is this regulator or, the, or this diaphragm is actually cutting some of it out. So we'll see if we get enough flow to get this up to 1.8. Yeah, much too much. So what we do now is I'll turn it down. like so and you will see that it will actually a regulator will start to decrease the amount on the gauge so if we can get this to about 1.2 sorry 1.8 so that's 1.8 bar and again it'll be the same every time 
But this rate, this uh, this uh, regulator, because it's got a built-in diaphragm, is keeping our difference with, between 1.8 and 3.5. Although this one is actually set to five. Hopefully you can see that. Why is this not focusing on anything? Yeah, Samsung problem. Give it a shake and it works. There, you can see that's five bar. And this is a just over just over three bar. Hopefully you can see it's just over three bar. Yeah, just over three bar. And that's why I like using a diaphragm regulator. <laughs> Took Took about half an hour to get there, but that is why I like using a diaphragm regulator. Because for me, it really smooths the delivery out. Although I've got two of them in the system, having one at the gun really makes a difference. It means that, you know, if I'm using a gun that takes much more uh, CFM, I'm still only getting just over one bar difference, 15 PSI difference between... The, the surge at the pull and it just gives it such a smooth delivery and it keeps that pressure the same and that really allows you to get better results i find anyway anyway guys i hope that's been of some use to you because it's taken me all day to do this <laughs> cheers thanks for watching as always bye bye